everyone. Welcome to the Receive Podcast. This week brought to you by Squarespace, 23andMe, and TheZebra.com. There they are. We'll talk about them a little later. Uh, I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm Bye. I'm Bernie. And I'm Gus. Can I say one thing real quick? It's a pre-tape podcast. <laughs> yeah, it is pre-tape. <laughs> Can I President, say one thing really quick? President's Day. Apex Legends is fucking great. That is a fun what? game. <laughs> It what happens? <laughs> we just taped the other episode like two days ago. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. Gavin made an offhand comment. He goes, you know what you should do? You should go we'll, we'll, and play on the console. And you oh, will have yeah. fun if you play on the console. I'm like, I'm not going to play a battle royale on the console. I went and played on the console. Fucking great game. <laughs> yeah. I just realized I'm fucking garbage. At PC. You, you are garbage. I'm That's garbage the annoying at thing to me. I much prefer playing anything on a PC. But I will play Battle Royale on console because I can get more than one kill. And when people always complain about PUBG, I think you said it on the last podcast, <laughs> that the upfront, like, head-to-head -head combat is garbage. Yeah. I think that's probably why I liked it. Right? <laughs> like, and I'm like, it's not garbage because it kind of evened out the playing you field chance, for you. Yeah. Well, PUBG was the kind of game where you can, like, if you get behind someone... Big thing in PUBG is if you know where they are and they don't know where you are, that's the thing. Get a few that, shots in. Yeah, yeah, or you can just like, you know, creep up on him and hit him in the back with a shotgun. A few shots in. A few shots in, exactly. I played on the console. Let me put it in perspective. I was level 10 on PC. <laughs> I had two, <laughs> two kills. What, what's level 10? Like, what's the equivalent? That's probably like playing eight or nine rounds. Okay. Is that it? Eight or nine? Yeah, it's not much at all. I don't go, I don't go once a level well, per round. It's a significant, it's a, it's a decent it's amount. It's not quite okay. 10. Because the first ones you I get a couple. like 20 to 30. No. It does. You're saying I go up a level around. It's a lot of games, Mark. Okay. It's, it's, it's a fair it's amount. Not a lot of a lot games, of but you're not very good. It's a big sampling of it. Okay. The entire time I got to level 10, first of all, I never got any kills. I got like one or two kills total, which was fucking embarrassing. But I have to say, too, I do have an issue, I think, more so with the matchmaking on PC because I would get in my squad and I'm with a level seven guy who has zero kills. Me, I'm level eight with one kill. And then another guy who's got two kills. That's our squad. Then the fucking champions come up and it's like, this guy has 800 headshots and 400 shotgun so, kills. The problem, Barbara, is when you start the game, it shows your stats to everyone else in your squad. Oh, yeah. fuck that. And then it shows it's like the people who Barbara. are in first place, it shows their stats too. So I mean, you're like, well, it's only oh. for that character though. Right. It is only for that character. But still, you're like, oh, I just started playing. I don't have anything. It kind of reminds guy, me of Smite. Because once they show your, like, when you enter a match Man. with people, I think you show your level. I it don't sh remember. It shames you. But yeah, it does It does make you feel a little bad. So how many kills do you get on console? But, so the big thing, though, this is, I, I have way more kills. Way more kills on console already. The big thing was, though, is that, like, I've also never had one of these champions on my squad. No. I think I would have had that at some point. Like, I want the fucking ringer you're, who just shows up and carries me. I'm not, not, you're not ashamed to admit that. What? They match you with people your level. I'm in the game with them. If it's putting they, the they match you with the zero, they match no, you with but the shouldn't losers. Shouldn't it be that it matches the yes, entire match with that right level there. and not just your party? Because that just means you play with dog <laughs> shit and you play against really good shit. Right, right. that's bad matchmaking. It's good for them. That's right, not, that's, <laughs> that's team making, not matchmaking. Right, right. That's like, I'm like the cannon fodder in that case. But someone's got to be in the. So I never in the my whole experience of playing on PC. And Cody, I know you have opinions about this. You have to join me in this. He's gone. Oh, there he is. <laughs> oh. He's back. <laughs> Do we have any beer? This is the international symbol. I don't want to drink. <laughs> like this. Thank you very much, someone. Here, open your mouth. The entire time I played on PC, I had never been recovered. Where they like get your little, yeah. they get your badge when you die, and then they can take you to this little place and respawn you. It's actually a really cool mechanic. Great. Not only had I never been recovered, I had never been revived. Maybe once, maybe once in like 20 or 30 games had I even been revived. In other words, if I died, the whole squad died. Like we just got wiped constantly. Mm -hmm. I never you have had a, a lifeline on your team? I usually play lifeline. That's your problem. Well, I, I got the any, fucking any, robot any, that any, I put out with the tubes. Anybody can revive though. It's true. Yeah. So I uh, go to console. I got revived in the first one. Like I took out somebody, his buddy took me out, my other two squad mates took out the rest of the squad, and they revived me. I'm like, this is like heaven. So did you oh. have like a revelation when you were playing it? Because you hated it before on PC. When you were playing on console, you went, fuck, I do like this. Like when did that happen? When I realized that I'm just shitty at PC. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically it. I'm I've aged out. 
and so, I admit it, I have aged out of PC gaming, at least on that, like, I was I was playing a match the other day click shit. with my, uh, my brother-in-law, and it's only two of us, and obviously we need a third, so I was matchmaking, and we get paired up with, or matched up with a random third person, <coughs> and, uh, we were playing, and we, we were all still relatively new, my brother-in-law, uh, in the chat asks, is there any way to go prone, or can you just crouch? I said, I think you can just crouch, there's no way to go prone. And then the other guy, this random person we matched up with, goes, no, you can go prone. I said, no, you can't. He goes, yeah, you can. He goes, look at me. I look at him like, you're just crouching, dude. How about now? You're, you're just crouching. <laughs> and the whole match, he was fixated on trying to go prone. Every 30 seconds for a minute, he'd be like, what about now? Am I prone? Like, dude, <laughs> you're just crouching. Stop. <laughs> we moved on. You're just... No, no, but what about now? Am I like, dude... Just stop. You should have just lied to him. Be like, oh, you did it. Nice. <laughs> I well, how'd you do it? <laughs> but he was just so fixated on the fact that he could go prone and that maybe Thank we just haven't figured it out. I don't know what he was doing because every time I looked at him, it was just the same thing. He was just hitting uh, control to crouch. Hit, uh, yeah, you should have, uh, you should, you should have said, you did it. You should make it a guide. Or when he got to do it. Or when he got down, you should have been like, hey, there you go. Now you're prone. <laughs> you did it. Yeah, it's funny you say that because. He did go down. I had to pick up his banner and revive him. I, I will say still though, it's and it's probably because we talked about the guns being similar or looking similar because they're not based on real world. What guns. about these guns? There you go. Actually, I, quite I still, sizable guns. I right? still don't know the the attachments. And I played a decent amount, but I'm just still like reading orange? every time I go to pick up an attachment. Just pick it up. Probably. Just pick them up. You run out of inventory slots. Open my beer. Then then when you run out of inventory tops and. St Slots then open your inventory and deal with them. Also, we get like a level three modification for a gun like a skull splitter And it only works on a prowler. Oh shit, Cody's oh, oh, opinion on this. Go ahead. Okay. I want to hear Cody so I Cody's think, backing me up on this matchmaking shit. Right. The matchmaking is is very bad. It is not. It is PC, bad. PC it is or console? It, it's, I play PC. Okay. And I've put in 50-ish, over 50 hours in this game already. Wow. I love this game because it is beautiful and it is fluid and the movement is great, but the the matchmaking is bad because it's so often that you will be paired with people who are are new or like half the game is like very very new and then half the game is like insanely pro player 500 plus kills and they just completely trash and they're all paired together because they're going in out over time. Yeah, I think so that's just because yeah. the, the game just launched and they have like 25 right, right, players. Right, there's now. no matchmaking yet for I it agree because there's no way to like they, they, the game just came out so they haven't been able to figure out like they're just put throwing everybody into the pool and watching them drown. My idea is that they need to do like a a gun game style like uh battle royale with this because the the there is a, a lucky concept to this game of like landing like can I get everything I need to make good loot and like it, do I get lucky with my drops or can we do a gun game style where every time you get a kill you unlock new things so that it, you just kind of progress based off your skill. Gun no. game battle royale no. would be interesting. That would be especially if you have to end on a knife or something. That's not yeah. the point of a battle royale. The point no, is you true. drop in with nothing and then you have to find. You, you do. Up, you still find things. There's a luck element. You just can't use them and necessarily use things unless you like l increase in skill. Like, right, right but that then skills. only favors people who are really good at the game and there's no like, luck well, aspect. Well, let me ask you guys this. Whatever happened to matchmaking, especially for FPS games, where they had Essentially, a rec league and a ranked league. Like, why don't they do that? Doesn't Overwatch, Overwatch have that? Does that. They, yeah. they will do that. They'll, they'll they'll do that. that. Most games have that. Have it where, hey, why does this have it? Like, why why can't I just go play in the rec league? I know these guys are shitty. I, I don't think, if yeah. I remember right, Overwatch <clears throat> did not launch with that. No, uh, no. That, not, that, that not came at all. in after it, a little bit. In fact, their, their ranked league took a little while. By the way, Overwatch League starts tomorrow, mm, season two. Just watch it. It's great. Just Who, who's going to win? Uh, Houston Outlaw. I mean, who did win? This is a pretext. Yeah, this comes out on Monday. Yeah, mm. I guess. Oh, geez. Uh, well, Houston, <laughs> I don't know. There would be a lot of teams to play. There's like that five, was six new teams. Prediction. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's like when I think about, like, going to ranked, like, have a ranked thing where you can only unlock stuff in ranked, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you play in rec, you just got to pay for everything, basically. So you're not going to unlock anything. So it keeps those players out. What was your highest yeah. rank in Halo 2? Do you remember what you could get? You, yeah, think. you could like get all the thing and then the oh, icon would change and then it become like a moon and different like crescents of the moon. Yeah. And then level 50 was like the halo. And it, it was so rare to see. Thanks, him. Cody. Yeah, the thing that drove me crazy though is people went through a period where they would try to level down. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. And it's like, what was the point of that? Because they just wanted to like. They would level down people. and level up. Yes. Like, what? <laughs> there was a whole, there was a whole like, like algorithm behind people who were leveling in Halo. Did you? I want uh, maybe I'm wrong. Didn't Max Oberman write the the algorithm that did the ranking for Halo? I believe 2? he was the multiplayer lead. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, think he like developed the math that went into figuring out what your rank was. Which forty two is, is high. 
Is that what you said you got? Yeah, I think I, I think sure? my highest one was 42. That's I mean, why I, I barely broke 30. I sat pretty steadily at like 35. Hmm. Uh, if I if I recall correctly, I, mean, I got I, nowhere near 50. That's all still up on Bungie, right? I'm, I'm trying to load right now. I think Bungie Sorry? did archive its stats. I had... I'm what? a level 75. Are you? Yep. What? Which one? In the all of them. Apex. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? I had a crazy stat when I looked up, and we talked about this on the podcast years ago. We looked up our Bungie stats, Bungie.net, and it showed for Halo 2, it showed my lifetime kill-death ratio, <laughs> Yeah. and I had like 25,110 kills. Jesus Christ. And 25,100 deaths. I was 10 off <laughs> from having a perfect 1-1 one, one kill death ratio. You basically leveled off your entire Halo career and made it completely pointless. It really was. <laughs> I'm like net nothing. Like I nothing contributed happened. nothing. I, I was something like 20,000 kills and not like 25,000 deaths. <laughs> I died a lot more. Who's calling me? My, I, th I find my I like playing support characters. I find my kill death ratio tends to suck a little bit, yeah, but I have these incredible rounds. I game. just don't like sitting still, which gets me killed a lot. Like in Call of Duty, I can't sit there and camp. I find it incredibly boring, even yeah. though it's the way to get kills in COD. There apparently is a player in the Overwatch League named I don't know if it's their actual name or a screen name, but named Yang Xiao Long. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Everyone keeps tweeting me about it, and I can't tell based off the screenshot if it's. Like a screen name or their actual name. That's interesting. Because I can't tell. She has Mika. She'd know. Yeah. Yeah. Should. Host of the Overwatch League. Season two starts this weekend. She just announced that, didn't she? She or, did. No, she did last season. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I thought she was got like some more official title recently that she tweeted about. It's funny to watch the guys at my gym kind of waking up to esports. You know, <laughs> they're 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 figuring that stuff out because they see it on ESPN now, and they're fascinated by it. They also we had a conversation today at the gym, which was How weird. We talked about the new Disney uh, SVOD that's going to come out, Disney Plus. Disney Plus? Mm -hmm. Man, that thing is going to be, that thing's going to change a lot of stuff because uh, Disney, it, in <clears throat> preparation for that, you know, they have to do earnings calls and things like that. They publicly announced that uh, Captain Marvel was going to be the first Marvel film to not go to Netflix. Right. Um, which they said, uh, the headline I read said Netflix, it probably was all other platforms besides Disney Plus. And as a result of that, they had to write off something like $190 million mm. in order to make that move, make that investment essentially in Disney. Plus, I was thinking. Because that's how much money they won't make. Right. So that's license, what it says to me. Fee for that streaming. Netflix yeah. is like licensing movies for like $150 million plus, you know, which is just fucking crazy. Wow. It's basically like paying for the movie. You'll still be able to buy it on and physical, though, won't you? Yeah. Or the but the, oh, thing sure. that, the thing that drives me crazy, and maybe that's a good thing, is because whenever those Marvel movies or whenever those Disney movies come out to Netflix, they never have them in 4K. It's like if you watch like Black Panther or Ant-Man and the Wasp on Netflix, you only get HD. They won't do a 4K stream, even though Netflix has a 4K player. It's like if you want to watch it in 4K, you have to have the physical media or <clears throat> But as we you're, discussed you're on an earlier podcast, it's still garbage. They don't, they don't even shoot in 4K. <laughs> right. But you can, you can definitely tell that it's not as good of a transfer. You can tell yes. the difference between, you know, also just fake 4K just it being even if the resolution is the same, if it's streamed 4K, it's a much higher bit rate anyway. Right. So the quality is better, even if it's not higher res. Yes. Same with YouTube. Disney says Captain Marvel will be first pick held back from Netflix. Expects a hundred and fifty million dollar hit in profitability in 2019 as a result. Oof. That's like. So. That's huge. So that's that's profit. That, too. that could be the yeah. budget of the movie. Yep, as I was saying, like they, they paid, they paid for the movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why wouldn't crazy. they do that with Avengers? And instead, do it. They probably still had a window where they could make money before Disney Plus would be ready to host it. Mm -hmm. mm. It's like there's no, there's nothing to put it on. You may as well put it on Netflix. So it's Disney Plus. You could find like all classic Disney movies there too. I, I or was they, it just oh, like yeah. recent? Barb, I think this Disney platform that they're going to build, the service they're going to launch, is yeah. basically. They took that model where kids came home every day from school and put in The Lion King or Aladdin, you know, or something like that, and watched the VHS tape every single day. Yep. That's now a monthly service that they, you pay for. I'd pay for it. I a would, lot I of people would, would pay for that. Pay every for that. parent in the world is going to pay for that thing, yeah. dude. It's so going to be smart. crazy. Speaking I'm, trying, of which, I'm, I'm trying to look it up to tell you more about it, but our internet is so wonderful right now that <laughs> everything's loading <laughs> super fast. Well, um, you we're... Oh, no. I was going to say we're live streaming this, but we're not. We're not. <laughs> that, that, that would actually be a huge <laughs> mistake. I've Cody's never, over there streaming uh, Overwatch uh, Season 2. I've never been able to conduct business at work. 
What does that mean? I just can't send. I can't have any. There's no calls here because there's no signal. I can't send anything because the Wi-Fi is crap. The really service crap. is set to launch September 2019. It took that long to look it up. Okay. I, really? I, I, I sympathize, Gavin. Sometimes I have to go home so I can <laughs> do emails and then come back. Sometimes what I'll do is <laughs> I'll take calls in my car and turn off the Wi-Fi on my phone because it's better to have the fucking LTE in the <laughs> parking lot than it is to try to do something over Wi-Fi in, in my office. Although, actually, the new office is uh, much better. Oh, is it just this hangar that's bad? It's bad here and it's bad over there. The new office yeah. Over is there great. it's great. Just come do emails in the new office. To be fair. All right. Can I, we've can never had little, good internet anywhere. Can you make a little email corner for me? Absolutely. I'll come and sit What down. else do you want in there? Do you want some like pictures of cats or Yeah. I've still never been in there. Come visit after this. You should have come today. Well, you didn't tell me. I, I got pulled out of it because I had to go to another meeting. Uh but we have this thing that we do uh in the RT content office where we have what we call lunch and learns. And today was Jake showing everyone how to do audio. Yep. So it's like we're, we're trying to be this like self-contained unit to where we don't need to have resources from all these places. And I'm going to do a day with drones, teaching people how to fly drones, see who is really interested in doing that. Uh, dude, I sent him this reel from this guy who's a drone op. Oh, we were talking the, about it this weekend. The wildlife stuff? Uh, yeah, we said the lions were in there as part of it, but it was a lot of like landscapes mm -hmm. and vehicles, a lot of vehicle <clears throat> stuff that was fucking crazy, like drifting cars. Man, these drone ops. They're getting incredible with what they can do. Mm. Hey, Eric, if you want to show a clip, uh, look up drone dune buggy wheelie. <laughs> it's, got, I, I, I just it's wheelie wheelie 2019. Good. Can we get a graphic? 2019. Yeah. I, I feel like... We're in the future. Drone dune buggy wheelie oh. 2019. I was about to say, it's going to take, uh, it's gonna take a year to load that video. <laughs> I, I, was trying to, I was watching that video and trying to figure out whether it was cammed in post. Because right. you can get cameras that fil film in 360, not necessarily for... Oh, this is the clip. Oh, wow. This, is this it? isn't the same one. This isn't the same one. It's still really cool though. Is there more than one drone dune buggy wheelie? <laughs> they're, they're, but there, they're there are a lot of cameras it. now where it's a 360 camera, but not necessarily meant for 360 viewing. Like you, you don't have to have a thing on. Yeah, yeah. I, I use one in Australia Age where you can just take 360 and then cam it 16 by 9 in post. So you'll never miss. You don't even have to aim it. You just, it's captured you just everything. film it later. And it was, I thought that's so cool. You should and come I feel teach like on something. drones. Yeah, you should come teach us that over at the office. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah or Phantom. It's we oh. have Phantom cameras that that's are true. owned by Rooster Teeth. It'd be cool if more people than Gavin knew how to use them. I tried to teach some people, but got the it's laser just team a, crew. Just a button in it. I, it's just a button, yeah, and uh, that button also deletes it, as they found out on Laser Team. <laughs> oh my god! I warned them. I think what happened on Laser Team was they disconnected a cable, and you were nah. like, "Oh, is that what it was? Nice. They just hit a button." The they button. hit the record button and then I fucking hurt my shoulder on that shot. <laughs> and then they hit it again. <laughs> yeah. So it recorded over it. I just deleted it. Cleared the RAM. It's really impressive. Ga Gavin is. I, I think you should do a whole on slow mo guys too. I think you should do a whole <clears throat> like course master class on cinematography, and because people love like when you do the rolling shutter videos and you get very technical. But this guy is like I've never met anybody who is more wired. To be a cinematographer than Gavin, it's I, like we've we've talked about it so many times. Yeah, the most impressive thing to me that you've ever done is that fucking explosion. It was that sponsored video where you set the exposure right, where it's like it didn't yeah. blow out. It looked fu it looked great. It's, it's it's yeah. We've talked about it. it's hard to expose for something you can't see and you don't know how bright it will be. But right. you have to split a difference. Also, you lose some yeah. areas, but you when don't you're doing five thousand frames a second or whatever you're doing, you know, what, yeah. what, what was that you were shooting that in? So like 400? 2,500? There you go. Well, I learned is, how to point a light. microphone at people's face today. My, my, the thing <laughs> right is the, the, mouth. the knowledge resets every time a new camera comes out. Like, I know the sensitivity of the phantoms I've used, but as soon as they put out a new one, I'm like, I, I wouldn't know where to guess this one. So you have to just gain, gain experience. And that's, go, I guess, why. You go and blow shit up. But yeah, the thing, too, is blow shit. he's literally, I don't know if that still holds uh, since you've made uh, Planet Slomo World. Planet uh, <laughs> Slomo. <laughs> the world. Uh, uh, you know, I was gonna say too. We talked about that when I, because I called it Slow Mo World, not the name of the show. Planet Slow Mo is the name of the show. But if you call it Slow Mo, something like Slow Mo Planet, even you get the search, don't you? Wouldn't it be better for search for Slow Mo? What? Because it matches Slow Mo guys. First? Like people go to type in Slow Mo guys uh, and they get Slow Mo Planet or yeah. Slow Mo World. I imagine you still find. Where, original, where was I in this decision? Guy? My original <laughs> name for that series started with Slow Mo, and YouTube were like, nah. Oh, really? So I gave him another one. We have the little input. And then it was just like, if the content's good enough, people will see it anyway. It's, my, it's always my belief. It'll make it out there. But 
I yeah, I would have rather it had a different name. Got to say one thing for YouTube. Uh, when they have those originals or, you know, the, the programs that they fund, they promote the fuck out of them. Mm-hmm. Like, they promoted Laser Team. When we put that out, it was like they promoted the hell out of that movie. It's probably the best marketing we've ever had for anything, honestly. We have, like, billboards and all that stuff. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it works because then so many people, like, tuned in to watch it. And then we got, like, Laser Team 2 right away after that. YouTube came back and said, yep, let's do that again. And so. you guys were all very happy. What's that? <laughs> Just kidding. To make yeah. laser tune too. Yeah. yeah. We were, we, 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 Back in the mullet. Yeah. <laughs> His mustache and the, everything else. The second one took less time to make. So it was, it was well, like, I, I I felt like the morale was a lot better for uh, the second one because you guys got to be inside the whole time. There was no night shoots because it was like majority on the spaceship, right? Yeah, I'd say once we were in yeah, once we were out of the alien shit bucket, it was it was a nice shoot. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But <laughs> well, that was like right at the beginning. But I will I will say this personally is like you say morale was higher. My morale was lower because mm-hmm. it was a smaller movie. And I don't uh, think okay. I don't think that a sequel should be smaller, you know, than the the first one. It's just like if you're making did, a sequel, go get bigger. Did, did, didn't they make a joke about that in twenty two Jump Street? You know, twenty two Jump Street breaks that fourth wall very much uh-huh. or that series. And they talk about how like, oh yeah, that's what movie executives want. They think <clears throat> we made this much money with this much budget. Let's spend this much more and make that much more on the sequel. Yeah. It's like it's all about it's, it's all works. it's all math. It's just you like, want to get bigger, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not smaller. So it's the wrong direction. <laughs> but the well, thing that, I always that, think about Gavin and his <laughs> cinematography brain is I forget what we were doing. <laughs> I think we were just bored. We we're throwing rocks into the water or something. And it would splash and Gavin would he said just like really offhandly that he's trying to time his blink when the splash happens so that he <clears throat> captures in his own brain what the splash looks like in that moment. Whereas I'm just looking at it going, Kunk, you know, throwing yeah, shit it in. Was, it's something I did as a kid. I remember the first time I did it, I was just throwing a, a spoon into the sink and it landed in a bowl of water right as I blinked. And I was like, ooh. So I used to always do that. If there was a quick moment, I would just shut my eyes so I could remember it a bit longer. And now I do that. I don't really need to anymore because phones have slow-mo, but now if I'm trying to see if a subject will look cool, I just blink <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that looked cool in my blink. Because you stop taking in new information, the lets you remember the, the one frame you closed on. I do oh, that too. You do, you do that yeah. too? What do you yeah. do it on? Stuff like that, like splashes, yeah. throwing something into it's something. It's like a fun game. I find you... that fascinating. I or really like do. if like yeah. things are flashing up on a screen and you want to try to capture one, you just blink and so <clears> try to capture it in your brain. And it's weird, it only saves it for a little bit. And then your br- your brain starts to try and remember it, and you you mess it up. Like any time you access a memory, you balls it up. You're you know, degrading it. Yeah, you know it's like making else? a copy of a copy. Yeah. <laughs> you know where else I use that? If I'm like trying to put a hat on with an outfit, I put a hat on. I look at myself in the mirror and I close my eyes, <laughs> and then I put another hat on and I open my eyes so I can compare the two images in Just my one head. One, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. For all my I'm hats. I'm trying to think of anything I would do that for. <laughs> I can't, I can't think of a single thing. Well, you're you're ever like walking Bill. in on you and you're like, <laughs> you're like, to me, to me, yeah, like shut up, don't look at me. <laughs> Gus is making fun of me for my electricity. Sh- I, so I, 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 was, I, was, I said to Gus how ashamed I am of how high my electricity is. You should be bill. ashamed. It's a high electricity it's high. Bill, and I've been trying to fight this for years. And I, and I showed it to him very privately over here before the show. <laughs> and what does he do? Oh he, my God. He starts reading out everything and I shaming start yelling it to the people in the, booth in the room. over there. Wait, how high, how high is high? Dude, he uses quadruple the amount of electricity I do. Well, to be but fair though, a, Gus place? turns yeah. off all the lights and stares at his dog. That's all that he does at home. <laughs> to be fair. To be fair, lights don't really use that much electricity. I have guests that come over, so there's yeah, electricity yeah, I there. I feel like LED lights aren't a huge, yeah. it's like leaving a computer on, I assume, with Bunch or of hard four? Drive. I have four computers because we have a very computer. You don't turn them off. I'm gonna do, I make Ashley have her own let's share a computer with me. That's not gonna happen. Do you shut, enable like you the shut energy, down? energy savings in the control panel. They're off. I'm just saying I've got stuff in my house and it goes it what goes stuff? up. Is it so all, my is it to all answer your question, my electricity bill is about three hundred and fifty dollars last month, which is very high compared to everybody else. Well, you also charge a car. I do too. You just got that car mm. though. Uh, what? Also, Nine months ago? how come I had an electric car for years, <clears throat> you get an electric car, and suddenly we have a charger now? You and Matt get an electric car. It wasn't me. You I've, and had, Mac I've had that electric- car for months. He got, it was because of him. I've had that car since June of last year. So it's, it's been a long time. I, I, I just want it be, to be known, I'm also a Tesla owner, so I also charge the car. So you can't use that as an excuse for why your energy bill you is higher. You've got no hot use tub, anything as an excuse. No pool. I have a pool. No. What would a pool do? Oh, the pump? Yeah. Yeah, I have gas on. heat too. Who put that sign that says electric vehicle parking who, only? Who did put that sign up? I don't know who did that. Not, neither of you did it? No. No. 
Everyone assumes, first of all, that I got the charger installed. Like, oh, Bernie, you got a charge off your car. Like, no. Well, wasn't that your charger, though? It was my charger. I gave it to Matt, though. <laughs> oh, okay. I gave it to Matt. And then Matt had it installed here at the office. All I want to do was... Why would someone think your charger was put in there by you? Yeah. How do they know it's my charger? Because you talked about it? how you had that charger signed. But I gave it... I, I, it's a signature edition, so I have it signed. <laughs> I mean, hunt Elon Musk down and say, will you sign this? <laughs> Wait, there's a signature charger? It's signed by Elon Musk. Yeah. It'd be like it, buying a USB cable signed by Steve Jobs. Like, who cares? <laughs> I, 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 listen, I didn't ask for it! I didn't ask for it! He signed it to my favorite pedophile, which I thought oh, was really, really fucking weird. My favorite weird. pedo guy. But, uh, but I gave it to Matt because I didn't want to install it at my house. They sent it to me. It's for referral codes. And, uh, by the way, I think, away I, with that. I think I missed the boat on something here. Because I see, like, all these YouTube videos, and everyone's always putting the referral codes for people buying Teslas. I never did that. I never put yeah. in any videos. Dude, you like missed that. out on a free... Roadster on a free two hundred fifty thousand. I don't car. think so. That guy, who's the guy doing that? There are a couple of guys. The one guy got two, uh, and another guy got one. Yeah, Marquez Brownlee did it. I can never do that. MKBHD. He, I think, fully funded a Roadster. I think he fully funded two, didn't he? Did he? Man, that's impressive. Um, they did away with the program. It's gone. So neither of you put that sign up. It's over. No. No. I was shocked when I saw that. <laughs> shocked. I was shocked when I saw that sign. <laughs> because when I saw that sign, my response was "fuck that," and yeah. I parked there. Fuck that. Yeah, parked there. Okay. I think if anybody needs to use a charger, we all know each other. Be like, hey, can you move? I got to plug in. Yeah. Like it's and plus that cable's really long. You don't have to be parked there. You can be parked anywhere in that area, and it'll yeah. reach you. Okay, so good. this is it's kind of ruined because now electric cars are so popular now. But Not being yet. an electric car hipster, yeah, you, you hear the mouth girl? My mouth is a girl. Hey, girl, like, like you ever do that thing where you're like you're. Your throat burps like it's not your whole yeah yeah like it's just like like, like, like it makes a weird noise. That's I've, I've had a thing when my ass farts too, but on the inside. Have you had that? <laughs> How does Where that it goes, happen? It goes like like it, uh, it like moves like a bubble moves. It moves into place as the next fart, but it is audible. <laughs> you ever have one that goes the other way? It, it's like, like reloading goes backwards. Yeah, if I'm on all fours, I always we laugh about. when I fart through my vagina lips. <laughs> I feel the bubble like a bloop. I've heard that. <laughs> I can't imagine that. I've heard that you can get a fart trap in your veg. Yeah, it's always it's so weird. So it like farts it's gotta be weird from the opening into in between your labia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a direction it goes. Like I don't think my balls are involved with my farting in any way whatsoever. No, I wouldn't think so. Unless you get really old and they hang really low. You know how you can mod? Oh, I'm really old. You can mod a car horn. Older. You can mod what? You can mod a car horn to sound funny. Mm -hmm. Why are there no anal horns that change the sound of a fart? Like this, like a little tube you could stick in your yeah, butt. Yeah, it's like a little butt trumpet, and it goes instead of. I mean, I think a lot one of better than the other. A lot of it is the flapping of the ass together, and if you put yeah. something in there, then yeah. it, it's right. It's but if not, you fart it down one of those party things, right? But then that's length. Like it keeps the ass separated. Like but it creates a different you gotta shape. Keep it separated. Can I give you a little life hack? <clears throat> I'm curious to hear this. If you're if you're in a situation, I know exactly. What we got a fart. Say. And it's it's there's like people in the next room or something like that or you think if you just grab like one butt cheek and pull It just comes out like this <laughs> Yep, like hey, Barbara, I knows. can't tell you how many times I've had to spread my ass cheeks to win How fart. loose is your asshole? I just grab you I just, just gra I do it. one side. I do one side surely you're just moving the closed off part further back You listen to me. You're you only spreading the end. You're gonna try this and you're just gonna change your life. Yep You, you won't have to get out of bed to fart you're, with Meg. You'll be just like <laughs> It'll make that noise. You know That's what exactly else could what it your sounds life? like? What? Squarespace. Wow. <laughs> a reminder when this episode of the Risky Podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Just want to be clear, my space is round. Whether you need a domain, <laughs> website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Squarespace has launched even more templates to make creating a powerful online identity even easier. Each template is a starting point for a wide range of projects. Whether you're pursuing your side hustle or promoting your main gig, you can create a beautiful website with Squarespace's all-in-one platform. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. It's easy to set up or transfer your domain on Squarespace, and you're able to manage all of your domain and building settings in one place. It's also never been easier to sell products or services online. Squarespace allows you to manage your products, orders, and inventory easily. You can start your free trial today at squarespace.com. Go to squarespace.com slash roosterteeth to get 10% off your first purchase. That's squarespace.com slash roosterteeth for 10% off your first purchase. And you know, we've been asking you to share your Squarespace created websites. We've gone through and picked some of our favorites. And as a reminder with Squarespace, you too can make sites like this. So be sure to tweet at us with hashtag RT Squarespace. Here are a few of our favorites. First up is <laughs> at Sam Rad. I love these. Or Sam Raddy. Oh, Video look, editor. You're in Austin. Uh, next up, we got hire that dude. Under video editor in Austin. Well, here's next at the underscore camera dude. 
Whiskey City Burlesque, all about that. And last up, we have at Yanni Benheim, uh, filmmaker also. So thanks for showing us your <coughs> sites. And you can make sites just like that with Squarespace. Go check out the website. Right there. If you send it to us, we'll put it on the podcast. That's great. I'm still yep. working on my Bernie Burns website. Got it, Barb. I need I need a mock-up. We should track Bernie's electricity usage on BernieBurns.com. <laughs> <laughs> Let them run a real-time feed. What's Bernie using right now? Get you know what a smart to me is. What's that? Get a meter that tells you what it is. I have that. I, in fact, Gus's job in the old office. One of my jobs. One of his jobs. <laughs> Was I had a I have a voltmeter, plug-in voltmeters, and I went through and like measured everything in my house of how much it eats because everyone else has always had lower electricity bills than me, and I always assumed I had something that was just sucking up power. Something I was something was fucking up, like a battery charger that was off the rails or something. And it's been a decade, and it's just like I just use more power. So I just use more power. What it, I used to do at, it's my the, AC. at the old office is it's I had to have AC. a device. I don't know if you remember this, where I would plug in every piece of equipment we had and determine how much energy it drained. That way we wouldn't trip breakers anymore. That device was called a kilowatt, which is a oh, very funny name for uh, for that product. So we'd measure it, and then we'd know, like, this is how much we can plug into this outlet before we're going to trip the breaker. This is how much we can put here before we trip a breaker. We get the actual usage of it. Real time. Does the power supply for a computer, does it draw more power as it's doing more stuff? Yes. So it, like, actually pulls more electricity. <laughs> Absolutely. It doesn't just pull the same amount of electricity and spit out what it needs. It'll, it's going to pull 120 volts, but then it starts pulling more amps if the more you start to do. Okay. So it's more draw. Yeah, for Isn't that how not. everything works though? Yeah. I have a thing where my turning on a hairdryer like dims the lights, which is expected. A hairdryer is like mm -hmm. zero to a hundred in one second. But also when I start printing it does it. Oh yeah. yeah. Like, why does my printer pull so much? Laser. <sighs> laser printer? Is or laser printer? You don't I feel know like what I kind of printer? Do you buy ink for your printer or do you buy toner, dude? It's real easy. I'm not sure I've ever can you changed put, it. Can you so put it's color? It's, it's, a, it's a laser jet. It's a laser jet, yeah. How do you know? Because you would, the ink would have dried out by now. You don't right. know how long I've been that, printing. That, they expire it. They make, they make it happen. Are uh, I laser like the, printers more common nowadays? Because I feel like that's newer. To they've gotten, I mean, <laughs> cheaper. They're newer. cheaper. It's, yeah, they've gotten cheaper. They've been around for I think inkjet's inch probably newer than laser. Yeah. Right? I don't know but, how but inkjet was a cheaper solution. Any of that works. works. I don't know how printers print so small. What are they doing? They just how, how does a printer print? They they spit toner onto it and if then they took, bake it on with the laser. If you had it print if you could film upwards through transparency and a printer came over on a microscope, would it look cool? It sounds like a slumbo guys video if you ask Yeah. Me. Are there printers that are like transparent? Like you the can, body of a printer? There's gotta be mm, one. Somewhere. I don't know, but you could always 3D print parts oh God. if you needed to to like fit in there. I, like it's one of, of those things where I, don't, I just don't know how it works. I know how most stuff works. That I use almost every day. Could that be correlated to the fact that printers are shit? How is it that it's the year 2019 and printers still suck? Dude, it's that's not, not as bad as how phone calls sound. It's true. Yeah. Well, those gotten worse over time. Printing just printing was the first technology. The printing press is like <laughs> modern technology. You start with the printing press, essentially. It is still impossible, even on a professional level, to talk to a printer and have them be like, this can't be done. Yeah. Every single conversation is, this can't be done. It's you like, want to print all the way to the edge of your business card? No. It's impossible. Can't no. be done. Or it's like to have a print job where you don't, the first step is not reboot the printer. Yeah. It's garbage. I have a, I have a color laser printer. Is it wireless? They yeah, use, uh, use no, it's not. They use have, a lot of electricity. It's not. It's at the office. It's not, <laughs> I don't have it at home because it's also massive. I just so your AC is what's doing your electricity bill? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Why use an AC in the winter? Well, I don't, but I'm on a, <laughs> I'm on a plan with the <laughs> city of Austin because my electricity bill gets so out of control that they like said, hey, well, like do you want to? You like okay? The, do you want, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> like we want to do an audit of your house and then they, they break it out over 12 months. So they average my usage. So I basically pay the same thing every month. But then they actually get to read what the actual usage was in the bill. So I paid more this month than I normally do. Where does it usually come from? Electricity from if the you, power plant. No, I'm, <laughs> if you could see your breakdown of where the sources of electricity are coming from, like what is oh, I can't see that. Oh, really? But Gus was pointing out today too. Once you get over certain tiers, yeah, like you use so many kilowatt hours in a month, then they the the prices go up. Mm. So like yeah, they every, penalize every, you. every basically every five hundred kilowatt hours you use, there's a multiplier. And it's like more oh, and more sucks. and more, right? That's what so I'm the more you start using, they like by the final tier he was in, he was paying quadruple than he was for his earlier tiers. I feel like that's aimed specifically at Bitcoin miners. 
<laughs> Probably. Yeah, or just people who, you know, they're How not running energy efficient. Do you think the electricity of the Rooster Teeth <clears throat> office is... Uh, it's kind of astronomical. I could tell you, but I don't know if I should say. <laughs> Probably I not. I don't know if that's public information. <laughs> but just it's a lot. This is like divided by all those people, though. Well, th that's the biggest expense, though, at the, at the company. People? The people. It's just like nothing compares to that. N nothing. It's I don't like that services can go dormant. Well, I had my gas turned off because I didn't use it. What? Oh, they, they almost did that to me. When I, I wasn't, when I was having my house renovated, I wasn't living there for a while. They called me and they're like, hey, we noticed you haven't had any usage in uh, about three months now. Uh, I still... Planning on using that gas there? But yeah. No, no, yeah, it's, it's fine. They're just being fixed up. Yeah, I, I, I guess I only use gas in the winter. Mm. For some reason, my hot water isn't done that way. It's like tankless and mm. doesn't have gas, but the heating is gas. I don't know. You know what else is bullshit? <laughs> what I discovered in this when I wasn't using any gas, and they called me to say, <clears throat> you haven't used any gas in three months. What's bullshit is you still get charged like 18 bucks a month. For that what? Makes sense. Even if you use zero gas, just in the fees. Fees for being connected? Right. Yeah. Do they I, I don't like that they can remotely turn it off, but they have to send a guy to come and turn it on again. I think they, could, they also have to send a guy to turn it off. I think that's bullshit. Really? They just don't want you to hang out in the curb and punch him. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some guy like sneaking in. Sneaking in? Just goes up to the thing on the outside. We got to sneak. He's not coming in and turning off your oven. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know the gas is not yeah. inside. It's like you turn on your oven, you turn your back, and a hand comes out of the counter and goes, he turns it off. That's that guy's <laughs> job. That's what he does. I've seen that guy. He, like. In my yard, when he comes to to read the meter, like I'll be out walking my dogs sometimes, and it's like I hear him like, oh, I got, like I got to quickly convince the dogs to go inside <laughs> before the guy like opens the gate and comes in. Yeah, I always, I always imagine that those people have a database, like part of their notes is dogs in the yard or something like that. Yeah, because everybody thinks their dog is super nice, but nobody, and this should be a requirement if you're a dog owner, you should be required to when you leave your house for a 24 hour period. Record your dog and listen to what your dog does when you're gone. Because I don't think most dog owners don't realize how fucking loud their dogs are the moment they leave the house. Their, their dogs have the run of the place, basically. No, my dogs are silent. Do you know that, though, yeah. when you leave? Yes, I've got cameras. What about okay. when the dog goes off? Uh, if I'm not there, they're fairly quiet. They're just basking in the sunlight. Yeah. They, I, they, they may growl a little bit. I live next door to these two small dogs, and their owner had no fucking idea. How loud they're. I had to send them a recording of how loud, loud their fucking dogs were. <laughs> when just were barking? Gone. Just fucking barking. Just barking the entire time. Bark, 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 bark. And the one would bark and make the other bark. And then they both bark. But you do that when Ashley leaves. <laughs> I do. Ro, 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 ro. Nutmeg does this thing. Ashley's cat does this thing where if she's not in the same room as us for like two or three hours, and I'm assuming she does it when we're not at the house. She does this thing where she like panics and thinks that we're not there or gone. And she starts doing this caterwaul thing. And we, as soon as we call out to her, she stops it immediately. And then she won't do it again for the rest of like the day. Yeah. yeah. It's like a wah, 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 wah. <laughs> she does like this really weird. I'll have to record it and play it for you guys. But it's this really specific noise she makes. And she only does it when she thinks she's alone, basically. <laughs> Why doesn't she just come looking for you guys? Yeah, she's, she's not that smart. She's, I don't think. she's a pretty cat, but I don't think she's a very smart cat. Uh. Nice eyes. Yeah, she has those blue, yeah, blue, someone like, cracked marble eyes. Yeah. Someone in the new office brought their dog, I guess, who had never been to the office before. Very tiny little dog. And the whole day it was just like... Is it Arthur? No. Um, Ezra's dog. Oh, okay. I don't know. I forget its name. But very, very small. I don't, were you here yesterday? No, I don't think I was. I don't think I saw the dog. Was it the, like, I, the I gray was, one? The tiny gray yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, like ran into my office and yeah. like, oh, come here. And it just like, ran off like, oh. Okay. Yeah. But so it was crying the whole day, and I was like, "I was in Mush so, here yesterday. Mush was at the office. I saw a picture of Mush, so in the window. Zero gas used, eighteen dollars and eighty three cents. Gus, so how's that? How's that? I customer it. charge. You don't use seventeen dollars and thirty five no, cents. You don't have to. I used zero gas, and they still bill me almost nineteen it's, bucks. I mean, it's, to be fair, it's the same as having a phone line and not using a phone. Exactly right. But but you don't. If it's if it wrong, depends they come to your monthly. house. They don't charge. If there's a leak, they gotta be ready to roll a truck to your house. I actually thought about that's starting a very small leak so my my gas wouldn't be turned off. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah, you can leak safe. out enough where it's like so few parts per million that it wouldn't do anything. But it would measure on the but meter. Yeah, over time. Over well, how long? Over time, it would fill up in the house too. <laughs> like one, how many? Like five part per million. <laughs> I don't know, what's the smallest amount of I, I was thinking- So a million part per million is like a cubic foot, right? Like that's what you need to, in order to measure. You need to move a cubic foot in order for the gas meter to move. 
Is that right? Yes. That's Oof. how they measure it. It's a lot of gas. It's a lot of gas. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is not going to speak well for my energy usage, but I discovered something really cool. Do you guys have a stovetop, a gas stovetop? Yeah. I have in the past. You have in the past. But you don't now? You don't no. have electric? Okay. So, <clears throat> it's like the gas, the gas comes out. It goes around this like metal disc, and yeah. then you, it goes click, 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 click with the igniter and lights it. Here's what I found out. So, JD tried to for Thanksgiving. He likes we like to do culinary experiments because I want to teach him how to cook his own fucking food. So That's code not, for bad food. What's that? <laughs> culinary experiments is code for bad food. It is sometimes. We'll make some like he'll have this idea for like I don't know like I don't know peach steak or something like that. <laughs> oh. You know, and like all right, we'll try that and see how that works. Uh, but he wanted to make fried rice for. Thanksgiving. I don't know why. It was it was it was horrible. It was horrible. He's like vegetable oil, and it like didn't get hot enough, so it just basically was like, oh, it was like oily rice. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's it like was slippery rice. <laughs> yeah. Slippery rice. Yeah. Yeah. Slippery rice. <laughs> he acknowledged it was terrible. So I was like, it's just I think we're dealing with a heat problem here. So I got some sesame seed oil, and That's I so or- good. I ordered off Amazon a wok, like a a wok that you put yeah on your range, not like a one like standalone one. Something. I don't know. Maybe Wait, this what, was what from the you, 70s? They have the electric walks. You yeah. ever see those? Yeah. <laughs> so I got that. That was actually a really fun process because it came in it's stainless steel and I had to cure it. Mm. I had to blue it, well, which a lot of people call seasoning. You blew it. But yeah, I basically just uh, uh, crank the heat all the way up on the stove. And this is what I learned here at the time is if you take that metal disc off, no. And then turn on the gas and light it, it just makes a huge fucking jet. Oh, of gas, really? And you get <gasps> super high temperatures. It's really fucking cool. But is you have to have a lighter to do it because it doesn't reach the igniter. Is that the I'm danger like, of it like traveling down the gas tube at that point? I don't think so because it's all it just coming out. Yeah, it mm. doesn't diffuse it basically. Yeah. It's, just like, phew, it's like an open gas pipe. That's wicked. It's pretty cool. So then I could like heat this metal, uh, and there's videos of it on YouTube that you can see. Um, called it's usually called bluing steel, and it's, so it's stainless steel. So then you just basically heat it until it gets hot enough to react with iron oxide, and it makes all the metal blue. And it looks gorgeous. Do it you looks have like to that. Do like, that? Like, it looks great. On it looks this like one, rainbow. You, did. I mean, you don't have to. With like all stainless steel stuff. But then there was a bunch of reviews on Amazon saying, I used this pan once and everything stuck to it. And everyone's like, you didn't. You, you blew didn't, it. Yeah. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't blow it. You didn't go blew through the, the proper procedure. And so it was fun. It was like a fun experiment to do that and then make perfect. If you there's, ever want to come over fried rice, come on over. There's a place over here down now. in uh, Mueller, like by the Chipotle and all those places over there, where it's like, I don't know, like fast Chinese food. They make everything in a walk. I don't know if you've been in there, but it's like they have induction walks. I don't know if you've seen that. Uh, the magnetic ones. Where it's like, right, it's magnetic. Showed but us? since the <laughs> walk is, you know, round, the induction plates are also like depressed and round. Huh. So it's like the walk fits into this spot where it has heat all around it via induction. But why do that? I guess because it t- has heat everywhere. It's like instead of having the gas in one point at the bottom, it's got contact all around. I don't know what's going on with that walk, with that design, or the metal that they make it out of, but that thing gets hot everywhere. Like, if you put on that, and it is an incredible amount of heat that comes out of when you pull that diffuser off. If you, off. like, burn yourself when you're doing that, do you just tell someone to walk it off? <laughs> it's just like, it's just waiting for that one to come out. Who is that, Eric? Yeah. It up. You just killed the podcast. I don't, I don't know where to go from there. I'm, I'm done too. But you guys, seriously, if you want to come over for fried rice, I do. We make great fried rice now. It basically just tastes like twelve dollar fried rice that you can get from Mama That's Foods the best or whatever. Kind though. Yeah, but it's like it costs like ten, 10 cents. <laughs> but why do you to need a it? wok for that? It's for the heat. It's like, we tried to make it in the pan with vegetable oil, and it was just such a misery. And the wok was—I'll show you the one. It was like thirty-five bucks on Amazon. My main problem with it, more than anything else, is. I'm not a person who likes clutter in any way. Mm. I like everything to have space. I like you to stay organized. I order an like, awful lot of stuff on Amazon for someone who doesn't a like. A lot of it's organizing stuff, though. Honestly, <laughs> I just want, organize like, the other stuff. Like I just yeah. bought a Pelican case for all my sailing stuff, and it's all like neatly put in there. Like boom, boom, boom. What kind of stuff goes in there? Pelicans in, the, in your sailing case. Yeah. What do you have? Which binoculars. Oh. Uh, I have a bearing compass. A walk. What is a bearing compass? Uh, it's a compass that you can hold up to your eye, and it's got a line, and so you can hold it up, so you can take a bearing on like a lighthouse or a buoy. Or Why something. don't you just okay. use a compass? Yeah, because then you're like this shit. Like Why don't you just do that? Yeah. Did they have one so you can do like that? But this is one. This is like, it's a compass. It's Why don't you get, like a bearing compass? Why don't you get a contact lens that has a compass in it? What? <laughs> uh, actually, my binoculars have a compass in it. That was a cool gift that I got. So why do you need the bearing compass? Uh, because you're always using binoculars for if everything. His binoculars you know? are locked in his pelicans. Yeah. 
A lot of it too is like the next trip I'm taking is like an educational one for uh, JD too. So it's like trying the tools out. I actually, he has a separate pair of binoculars. I got him this. This is the nicest gift I've ever gotten anybody. You got to see these things. You both would be amazed by them. Barbara, you'd be like, all right, whatever. Yeah, probably. But they're binoculars and you're looking and they got like 14 by magnification. I Holy think. shit. So they're significant. But when you have that much magnification and you're looking through it, I should look it up exactly what it is. Uh, any little movement? Any little, it's like, bleh, it's yeah. everything's like that. Hit a little button and it goes, boop, puts a gyroscope and image stabilizes. <gasps> oh, that's super so it's cool. Like optical stabilization. It's fucking cool, dude. It's really fucking cool. I want that. It was a bit of a pricey birthday gift. Oh. And he actually, I gave it to him before his birthday's in March. But I was like, look, I'm getting you this. And I totally got it for him so that I could use it. But it's just like, <laughs> And the thing on waves and everything else too, when you're looking for shit, like does he to, come sailing with you guys? Yeah, he's a uh, he's not doesn't have as many certifications as I have because school gets in the way. I mean, I don't know if that's the right way to say that. <laughs> Fucking school, <laughs> he's got to go to school and learn algebra. But uh, nerd, yeah, he just he can't take off. He goes to a public school and you can't take off time such to go do a, it's anything. Such a racket. It's a fucking racket. They just do it so they can ca- they can claim uh, tax money. It is true. They have to have a, it's all based like, on attendance. Students in for a certain amount of time in order to get money mm-hmm. from the federal government. How far north Garbage. can you get in a boat before you're considered to be doing like some extreme boating? So here's what I've learned. I've learned a lot of crazy <clears throat> stuff I didn't know that that uh, compasses have zones that you get rated. Your compass that you have doesn't work everywhere in the world <laughs> because essentially what it basically boils down to is. The further north you get? Or the further south you get closer to the pole, the weight of the needle in there, and you can buy global compasses that work everywhere, but they're ridiculously expensive compared to other compasses. What does the iPhone use? You see, I don't know what the iPhone uses. It's like a gyroscope, right? Why does a gyroscope tell you where north is? I don't know. I don't know how it works. I don't, I don't, I'm just making shit up. Why do I do this with it when I'm using the... You calibrate it, right? Yeah, you do that figure eight shit with it, so... And I've even looked on the app store, the bearing compass thing that I just said, where you hold it up to your eye. They have ones that do like an AR version of that with a smartphone oh. where you can hold it up and do this. But they, God, they were just woefully inaccurate. Garbage. Yeah. Also, there's a lot of stuff too. It's like you think like a compass, you pull out, you go, oh, it's 358 degrees. You know, it's like just left of north. And that's not true. Wherever you are in the world, do you have to deal with deviation? Of the compass that you've got in your hand, and you have to calculate for the deviation of that compass, and that's depending on where you are. But depending on like the metal objects around you, like one of the things you get when you get in a new boat is you have to like do this maneuver to where you calculate the deviation because as the <laughs> engine block doing this, but with the boat, was well, the engine block as you take different headings, the the engine block is in a different place relative to the compass on the binnacle, it's called, and that can throw off that. But then also depending on where you are on the globe. There's variation, and every nautical chart has on. I'm boring the shit out of you guys. Is this okay? Can I talk about no, this? No, this is good. Fine, yeah. I'm going to explain how the iPhone compass works after this. Okay, like a, naut- a nautical chart, when you get it, like if you're going to my next trip, we're going to the British Virgin Islands, uh, you get. What? Nice, British virgins. Yeah, <laughs> they get some British virgins. Do you mind saying where do you, where do you start that trip from? Uh, a place co- in Tortola. Okay. It's called Road Town. Okay. If I was to put a giant neodymium magnet on a boat, and just drive around the ocean. Would that be considered terrorism? I don't because know, like, everyone's compasses would go to that. Maybe, or if, uh, like, like, isn't that terrorism for cutting those undersea cables? That's like a big thing that they've been focusing on? Yeah. Lately? Is it, it seemed like that was a bigger deal like 10 years ago. Yeah, like, well there's, now there's just more and more cables. Yeah, undersea data cables are getting cut. Yeah. By how they deliberately or by anchors? Well, I don't know. That's so the that's thing. the thing, hmm. who knows? Shark bite. <laughs> So, Sharks bite them. But uh, real quickly, oh. based on where you are in the world, nautical chart will tell you the variance, or the variation, excuse me, variation of the reading. So it's like this one is, uh, in this region, the variation for your compass is 10 degrees west. So you have to God, subtract. That sounds like such a headache. Also, it changes by so many minutes or degrees per year. And this chart was made in this year. Oh. So you have to go through, look at the, look at the date of the chart, and then calculate all the way because up. Because the magnetic poles are moving. It's too, funny right? you say that because I read a couple months ago that the 
numbering for airport runways, the numbering for airport runways is based off of magnetic heading as well. Right. And the that changes. Pilots get updated yeah. charts every year that tell them like the runway's two seven left, but actually it's at this angle. And they're having to actually we've gotten to the point now where they're having to renumber runways in some places because the heading is so off from yeah. what the numbering is supposed to be. Uh, and because, you think it's so fixed. It's not it's at all. Not, the pole has been moving dramatically. It's, it's not consistent across the globe, and it's also not consistent over time in a specific place. Don't they flip occasionally as well? North uh, and south? Yeah. I think that's and, like on a geological level, though. Right, occasionally yeah. on a geological level. And we might be in the beginning phases of that right now. They say, I think that the North Pole is moving towards Russia now. <laughs> but don't... <laughs> How does that, does that move the equator? How does that work? I think the equator is just a fixed line. Like, that's just the middle of the planet. But there are conditions that only occur at the equator. So how can that just be a made-up like line? Like what? Doesn't water move to I think the Coriolis the effect is kind of bullshit. Like, as far mm, as we know. Yeah. Right. So the inside, the, here's what the inside of the compass looks like on the iPhone. It's just four sensors that detect magnetic oh, it's fields. sensors. Right. And then hey. as, mag as magnetic fields go through them, they can sense where they're going because it's per permeable to the magnetism. Interesting. So I guess so cool. it seems like based on that the iPhone would work the iPhone compass would work worldwide Those sensors are used in a ton of stuff Also everything I said is like they when you're getting certified in coastal navigation They like I have little spreaders, you know little compass nice. parallel <laughs> rules I think my spreaders to the Virgin Islands <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, You can only call them speculums <laughs> Just the, So oh you also God. use the other type of compass <laughs> What do you mean? Like oh, like, I'm sorry, yeah, like a compass with the two points. So all of your things in your pellet case, you got That's two compasses? That's why we call it spreader, and I didn't know why they said, why don't I just call it a compass, but then I realized now there's a compass. <laughs> so that makes sense. Uh, it would be really them. confusing if everything you used was called a compass. <laughs> so, yeah, because you actually, on a nautical chart, you use the compass rows, which shows you the degrees to calculate your headings, but there's a true compass rows, and then inside is another ring, which is the magnetic compass rows, which is shifted... Why not just hire a guy <laughs> with a, a thing on his hat and just have him be the compass? So that's the thing. It's a lot. A lot of times, even to like aviation help. The sailing Put him stuff, in your pelican case. <laughs> the same. The, the sailing stuff that I'm learning. You go through and you have to learn all this shit. And I think you have to learn it in case of an emergency. Like you have to run like on an aviation to learn like how all the dials operate. Like some are from vacuum, some are from wind speed, things like that. So there's like even solutions if you get in danger and it's not working. Like you blocked. This pedo tube, pedo tube mm -hmm. on an airplane. <laughs> Did it's not getting the air that? coming in. The solution is you smash it with a hammer to break oh, the yeah, glass yeah. on it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, so it's like, I can't imagine a more analog solution than that. <laughs> but then what happens is after you learn all that shit, it's not just shit, all the, that, you know, things they use for thousands of years, maybe not aviation, <laughs> in, in sailing, you learn all that stuff. And then immediately just turn on a tablet and you get your GPS heading and you get your yeah. GPS lock for your coordinates and you don't need to really use any of it. Yeah, but you got to know that stuff. Like <laughs> you I was, do. I, I was, I've been reading up on that uh, Lion Air crash from the 737 Max from a few months ago and it's just crazy to talk about. Like I, there was this New York Times article a couple months ago. You know I'm big into aviation incidents. And the, I'll give it, I'm just going to give the short version because it's a really long article. The short version is... Boeing wanted to make a new version of the 737, but didn't want to have to retrain pilots. It's like they needed to keep the, 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 essentially the plane as, as similar as they could so that pilots didn't have to recertify and spend tons of time uh, doing this, even though the engines were bigger and lower to the ground and yep. it created the plane handled differently. So they created this bit of software that ran that kind of corrected things in the plane. So it's like if, if the software detected that it was stalling, it would nose down. But some pilots, since they didn't do retraining, didn't realize that the software was running in the background. So what happened in the Lion Air incident was the software thought there was a stall happening <clears> because of malfunctioning, um, a battery is coming through from pitot tubes. And it kept trying to nose the plane down, even though the pilots were fighting it. And even though the pilots were fighting it, they couldn't overcome the software. There was a button they could have hit to disable the software, but they didn't know because they didn't go through retraining for this new plane. Man like, versus machine. Right, if they had just disabled the software, they would have taken manual control and everything would have been fine. But because it was a new plane and the manufacturer didn't want to have to have pilots retrain, they didn't know. Just so was it just hit. a slow descent as they were fighting? No, it? it was nose down. It was just straight down. It was straight down. Shit, that sucks. Yeah, it's like it, it's, it's and you're doing everything right. But why didn't the software they, they then? Think, they think they're doing the right thing. Right. They think because the software thinks the humans don't know what they're doing, and the but software. Surely the software could have been like, we're going fast enough now, down now, level but out. The, it was getting bad sensor data. It didn't know that it was going fast enough. 
That's awful. She just turned it off, but they didn't know it was even right. working. It's just a button on the Ugh. on the yoke that they had to hit Ugh. to disable it. So I'm at a point now where I have an optional certification they get. They're all kind of really optional, but this is one that they're like, even sailors like, eh, you don't really need this stuff anymore. But I kind of want to do it because I like stars. learning this stuff. It's celestial mm. navigation, yeah, with like a sextant and all that. So nice. You, can, you should yeah. have it just so you can use a sextant. Yeah. Sextant spreader, what else you got in here? <laughs> <laughs> my, I think my sextant spreaders the, to the uh, Virgin Islands. The original 747s had a, a, a sextant hole in the top of the cockpit. Really? <laughs> yeah, so that the, the original pipes were like before like real computer automation in the cockpit, so they could use a sextant in the cockpit to determine to determine when they were going on uh, like transoceanic flight. What's a sextant work? Well, you stick your instrument through the sextant hole. <laughs> and then nine months later, you get <laughs> little, little you get, sextants. Uh, I don't know, actually. I don't know. I think I, ha I have a practice one, and I have a uh, like a primer on how to do it, and I just haven't. So gotten essentially, to it it's yet. just looking I, I at the I think all it is the, the angle between you and the North Star, and then the angle where that is, and like your your heading, so you can know what direction you're going and like what latitude you're at. So yeah, it's it's amazing the stuff that you learn. You're like, oh shit! Like learning about tides and things like that, being able to calculate <clears> them, and then once again, once you learn how to calculate tides for a region that you're in and tidal currents. You go through all this fucking math, but then you get an app on a, a tablet, and you go, I'm going here, and then just scroll, and then, like, the tides go up and down. You see like, exactly what time you can go in to this, you know, marina or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's the thing, cool. like, one of the, like, basic things that I just didn't know about the world is uh, latitude versus longitude. And do you know how latitude works? Do you know what latitude is? It's just how far away you are from the equator, right? Yeah, but do you know how, like, when I say 17 degrees north, do you know what that means? Yeah, you're 17 indicators north. No, it's actually degrees from the center of the earth. Oh, really? That's how they do it. So it goes up to 90. And I was like, oh, I didn't fucking know that. I just, that it's one sense. of those things. Yeah. It's like, I just mm. never learned that. It's just a globe. They take the center point. They can't do that with longitude, but latitude is just, that's exactly what it is. Isn't longitude the same thing just from an arbitrary line, though? What's that? Isn't longitude the same thing just from an arbitrary line going in the other way? Well, the, the difference being is that it gets closer at the, like, you can only do your measurements for distance. Uh, because a minute of latitude is basically one nautical mile. And so you can't do that with longitude because it changes over, as it gets closer to the poles, they get way closer together. And latitude does not do that. Is that anything to do I with see, the, the world the, being... the rings get smaller, but they don't get any closer together. So. Because the, the Earth is fat around the equator than it is pole to pole. Yes. Worth with the Earth, you mean just from like not being an actual sphere? Well, if you if you yeah, like if or you were to go like, around pole to pole, it'd take you less time than going around the equator. I just think it's one of those things that we accept for the difference. But it's like as but, far as the geometry of a sphere. But I think also, isn't it minuscule? Like, isn't there that thing saying. where if you shrunk the like a yeah, cube ball exactly would be yeah. bumpier right. or like less spherical? Right. Uh, see, see the rings of latitude, Gus. The rings of latitude. <clears throat> Uh, which uh, on the screen they're, they're, they're the we're looking at a picture here of the globe. They're they the ones horizontally, right. yeah. yeah, and then vertically the longitude. The longitude gets they all kind of converge on the poles. So what determines the zero degrees on the equator? It's, it's the, even with the, so it's a zero degree angle from the center of the Earth. But what? Why put it there and not like where thirty is? Like because oh, it's the center it's of the a midpoint, sphere. right? From where? Both top and bottom. You know what the word center means? <laughs> right. I don't understand. You see, uh, you see horizontally where there's a zero. Yeah, yes. buddy. Go ahead. Like, well, why is that? Why isn't it a 30? <laughs> because then it would be further from one than the other. Imagine if you just took a cross section of the Earth and it's a circle. <laughs> yeah. Zero degrees from the center is here. But, wh not... but where do you take the cross section? Like When you cut, well, let's say you have an orange and you want to cut it in half. Yeah. Do you cut it at the zero or do you cut it at the 30? <laughs> yeah, right. I think maybe you're thinking what? like... <laughs> Like around here is what I mean. <laughs> what do you mean around here? Zero degrees is like all the way around that ring. The longitude tells you your degrees of where you are on that zero degree ring. Does that make sense? Yeah, I got you. <laughs> like the equator is zero degrees. Equator? Equator. It equator. Makes sense, it makes sense the equator is zero. Yes. Mm -hmm. This way. Yeah, buddy. But I don't know why it's this way. Oh, you're talking about longitude then? Yeah. You're talking about longitude. Oh yeah, they just had to pick an arbitrary point. Oh, oh that's what I was asking. That's yeah. why I was like, why is it on the saying, you, you kept saying the equator. You the equator the other way. Yeah, longitude's prime meridian, dude. That's where you're from. No, they, no, no, no. The equator's. What do you mean? What? The prime meridian's that way. Equator's that way. Yeah, but on the equator is zero, 
15 th from going around. So I said, why isn't the zero where the 30 is? What difference does it make? You're right. That doesn't, because I thought, we thought you meant the other way. See, there's another 30. See, See the 30 other 30 it? going the other direction. Didn't I say horizontal a bunch earlier? Didn't I? It, the equator is <laughs> the a line of horizontal. <laughs> yeah, but the Yeah, I know. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> God damn the goddamn. Look. You kept saying equator. Equator is basically a degree of latitude. The, <laughs> the prime meridian is longitude. You're asking Quite why is the prime meridian? The why is the prime meridian zero? Is you, what you're you, asking. You know why it is where it is? It's because of your fucking country. Exactly. It's because of your fucking naval empire. And they go, guess what? We're fucking putting zero on our city. The, the world, the, the the center of the world is right here. They did that thousands of years ago. You fast forward a couple millennia. Then I miss a fucking phone call to London because you guys call it Greenwich Mean Time, <laughs> even though it's not fucking Greenwich Mean Time. What's your solution? T time starts and keeps going around and around, and the numbers keep going higher. We don't need a new finish. solution. We have it. You're you, the one asking for a new solution. If it's daylight We're savings. about time. Surely you need somewhere on the world to be a standard of time. Otherwise, time just goes on infinitely, and it's like, what time is it? 8,004. So then just admit that London is not Greenwich Mean Time when you're in daylight savings time, even though you still say it's GMT. You do. The GMT is a fixed point. And the yep. BST is, uh, well, you know, yeah, but when seasonal. you schedule a call with somebody in London, what they always say fixed, GMT. What is that fixed point for GMT? That's the equator. It's the prime meridian. <laughs> Did you know that? That's the <laughs> fucking point! <laughs> is that anything to do with time? <laughs> or do they just think, time's already here, we'll put this here as well. Well, the really fucked up thing is when you go to the other side, I actually don't even know what it's called. What's the prime meridian called on the opposite side? It's still a prime meridian. Is it still the prime meridian? Yeah, but it's the, equator, up. the equator the whole way. They usually refer to the prime meridian as being the one that runs through London, separates eastern, well, I guess they both separate eastern and yeah. western hemisphere. But uh, it's, when you get to the other side, you get to the international date line, which they're just like, that thing is like, uh, this this is included in this day, this it's, is not. I think that's, that's, just the, that's, just, that's just the date line, yeah. Yeah, but well, yeah. that's because Hawaii is some, for some reason attached to the U.S., so they have to draw around that. For some reason, are you judging the United States for taking territories? Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a mess. That's the date line. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, the date line's a fucking mess. Look at that thing. That thing is the reason why there's a plus fourteen and a minus twelve. Look at that. There's a plus fourteen. It's right there. Yeah. 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 And that is that actually is perfect proof of an argument we had about six years ago <laughs> when I said that there's fifty hours in a day. So that little dot <laughs> It's fifty hours in a day if you Go ahead. Add talk. If no. you sub like plus 14 and minus 12, 50. That's, that's 36, dude. <laughs> plus 14 minus 12. That's a day is 24 hours long. That's it starts 36. at one hour and it ends 24 plus hours. Plus minus 12 is 36. What's 24 plus 36? I'm telling you, 20 plus 14 minus 12 is 36. If, there's 20, if the day lasted one hour, then yeah. If the day is 24 hours, it's. Why are we having this argument again? <laughs> it's 50 hours. That's <laughs> 36. A date lasts for 50 hours from beginning. Of the plus 14 to the end of minus 12 on the end of the day, 50 hours. Hey, did you know this episode of the Receive Podcast is brought to you by 23andMe? Does alcohol turn your cheeks pink? You may have alcohol flush reaction, a genetic factor that makes it hard for some people to process alcohol. If you've always suspected you feel more sleepy than others after missing out on a night of sleep, you might not be imagining things. Your genes may be involved. 23andMe allows you to go beyond ancestry to access more personalized insights about you based on your DNA. With more than 125 genetic reports, you can even gain insights about your health, traits, and more. And with the saturate fat and weight report, you can find out about how your genetics may impact your body's response to your diet. Uh, learn if you're more likely to weigh more uh, on a diet and high in saturated fat, even if you consume the same number of calories. I was actually looking at, not, not related to that, but I was looking at the Ancestry map today, or the DNA relatives map, and I found uh, a relative of mine for the first time outside of North America. I found a relative in, in Spain. Uh, so see what your genes say about your genes. See what your genes say about your health traits and more. Buy your 23andMe health and ancestry service kit today at 23andMe.com slash rooster. That's the number 23 andme.com slash rooster. Again, that's 23andme.com slash rooster. Yeah, all of my uh, DNA relatives on that have <coughs> been North America based. So for the first time, I found one uh, outside of North America in Spain. 23andme. 23andme. Sure it's not like 50andme, Gavin? I'm going to make an argument for that. We're done. I d We're over uh, it. Why is We're that? We're past it. I feel like we already established. You got to write that, that shit down. Correct. I still feel like 50 is the wrong thing because 24 so, plus 12. We all, oh, we can't do a poll. We're not live. Do 20, it anyway. 24 plus 12 is 36, but you're saying it's 24 hours. So wouldn't that take you up to 60? What? All right. 
I thought we were over it. Alright, let's get back. No, no, let me run it through. Oh, yeah, it's real quick. What, when does the day start? Midnight? Alright? Zero hours. Ish. Mm. So zero hours on plus 14. Right? So it's 2 p.m. 2 p.m. what? <laughs> zero hours plus 14 is 2 p.m. I can't in, live with this. In, I can't live like this. No, no, no. Plus 14 is the time zone. Okay. So you're in plus 14. Yeah. And a zero. When you what? say there's 50 hours in a day. On a date. Um, like the 3rd of March lasts 24 from, hours from the first hour in plus 14 to when it is 1159 in minus 12 50 hours have passed What what I get what you're saying, but you're saying you you it's, it's like a semantic argument You're saying that a day can last 50 hours, but a day is 24 hours. That's what it is He's talking about the date, date March 3rd on earth from the Beginning of when that date starts in the earliest place in the world to when it ends in the latest place in the world. Okay, I'm gonna Got ask Google. That. I don't How think there's the any. I don't think there's actually anything in plus fourteen. I don't think there's any habited islands, but it is a time zone. First dates. Why would they have it? Really? There's no. I think it's like two hours ahead of New Zealand. Yeah, but I think that there's a big jog to the right that we yeah, saw. Yeah, I don't know what's over there, but that apparently is where time starts for that day. By the way, I don't think there will ever be a point in my life when I don't mix up east and west the first time I go to say it. I don't know what it is about East and West. I just like I'm always, the same way. But why I, is that? I don't know what it is about that. I just never mix up East and West all the time. I do it in Sea of Thieves every single I did it fucking with left time. Left and right. Do you really? Where I'm trying to give someone directions, <clears throat> and I was like, "All right, it's going to be the next left." They're like, "You mean into the tree?" And I'm like, At the, "The next right." I, I don't know why my brain just doesn't. I wonder if it's because East alphabetically comes before West, which makes me want to read them from left to right. Hmm. I wonder if that's it for me too. Like it's east in my head. <laughs> is this completely the wrong way? God, I don't know what it is, dude, but it's because it comes up so much in Sea of Thieves. It's just like go west, go east. It's east. Sorry. I always oh, almost always say it wrong. Or it could be that confirmation bias you were talking about last week where I just remember the times I fucked it up because I get embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But you know what I learned, Barb? I, 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 there's a calculator here. I learned this way late in life. Huh? If, sorry, like simple th simple thing that like somebody <clears> pointed out is do you know the trick for learning right and left they teach kids? Like the, the L with the thumb? Yeah, it makes an L with your thumb. I didn't know that. That's uh, for your left hand makes an L with the thumb. So. Do you really didn't know that? Uh, no. I don't know. I was never taught that. Isn't that know? a red versus blue trick? Well, I mean, I learned it later in life. You didn't just learn it this week. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't learn it this week. I learned it like in my 20s, like well past when <laughs> you should ever have to learn anything about left and right. Not gonna for sure. lie, no I offense. have to use that trick every now and then. Do you really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just weird. like do it subtly where I just like have my hands down and I go left. I have that. I think it's an alphabetical thing with me because I always consider like the most basic fruit, the first fruit to be an apple. And like everything beyond an apple is like more advanced fruit. If I think of fruit, because it starts with an A, I think apple. Fruit starts with an F. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Probably the dumbest conversation we've ever had. <laughs> I found a problem, Gavin. What? It's a real big problem in the argument. It's it's not going to help either of us. Okay. No, oh, you both get to be right. Fuck. Plus Their fourteen and plus thirteen overlap with minus eleven and minus ten. Overlap? Well, overlap this way. Yes. <laughs> that's Look, why it does that. Right. That's why it does that. So there is no big difference. The biggest difference you can do is plus fourteen to minus nine. By the way, but for you can audio... by going straight up or down <laughs> you could go <laughs> from plus fourteen to minus twelve. Okay, I'll see if I can figure Which that means out. I did not mean to start this geometry discussion. We haven't had this conversation in six years, though, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, we've got to be miserable by Seven years. Gus. I'm going to send you what is the city? My condensed, <clears throat> uh, basically primer for coastal navigation. I think you would fucking love it. Yeah, this is. I think I think you would love that. I stuff. might. I really do. Not that this is live, but I've been here seven years now. What? Really? Yeah. Today, I if it was seven years ago, I'd be flying here right now. And really? You would have been picking me up picking at some point. Picking you up, getting lost on my way to the airport. Dude, I still remember when you guys were getting your visas and we would refresh that page all the time. God. Like in the middle of the night. I would be refresh it probably five or six times a day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a two weeks decision and I was like three and a half weeks past that. And I was like, what oh. is the update? You've always had problems with that. This is confusing. Yeah. Look at the start date and the end date and the result. Well, okay. Gus, did you read about... So sp Wait. taking one second of time between those two locations is 24 hours. What? Huh? That's exactly what you're saying. 
B Barb, I'm with you. I don't you. know how that helps me. It's, you're, you're right. So then <laughs> you're right. It doesn't. I haven't help done math in like 15 years. So then that's 24. It's actually I think 48 hours because of the two hours overlap. Well, I, I, all time is made up. I'm if, saying, if you I, I think, are you're, I think it's a 48 hours for a date. If it was minus and plus 12, that would be the case. So here, if I'll there's do, no reason to have a plus 14 time zone if the time doesn't start there. So going from January 1st to January 2nd, the result is two days. 48 hours, almost 50. I you guys so can you guys confused. can you send this to each other an email and, and not include us in this conversation ever again? <laughs> <laughs> so Thank if you. you're traveling <laughs> from <clears throat> Kiramati Christmas Islands to Papiti French Polynesia, I do that all the time. Even though it's a one second difference, <laughs> it's two days apart. What the fuck, <laughs> dude? There's people. There's the lines a mess. Aren't there, aren't there parts of India that have like half hour time zones or? Didn't we have Australia that? has yeah. that? Yeah, that's insane. I, I think, think there's a, a place what, in Canada can, too that also has that. Like, isn't Newfoundland on like? It a looks weird, like it. Yeah, like half hour. I think time there's difference? fifteen minute time zones too. Some places we gotta get rid of. Uh, we gotta get rid of daylight savings time now. Would that's you want to just do UTC like just a constant count? No, I don't like that. I I, I mean I, I like having time zones. Like it freaks me out that China's all one time zone. You know, that's it's yeah, such but, a massive mm. uh, chunk of land. It should have seven what, time what's zones. Say, what's saying that like four a.m. shouldn't be noon here? Four a.m. is noon. Like it's just easier to make the calculation. Like Australia has summer. It's easier because you're Christmas. used to it. No, but I wouldn't want to know. It's like, because then it's like, <clears throat> if I get the plus six, right, to go to the UK, and I go, well, it's 10 o'clock here, so it's four o'clock in the afternoon, so I can still make a business call there. Whereas if I say, well, it's 10 o'clock here, and I'd have to know that 10 o'clock in the UK, I don't have a simple addition that I can make mm. or subtraction. I got to know what every their business hours are. Yeah. I have to have like a window for every place. But That's way they, harder to Now make. there's just apps that could do that. Well, sure. Yeah. Just like you're talking about, like the sailing apps. Yeah. Just like, boom. Well, my apps also tell me what time it is there too. So. Can I make Can I make this call? dot com? <clears throat> <laughs> is it socially acceptable? Yeah. Well, you know what's. Uh, by the way, what while you say that, what's the latest to call somebody? Someone you work with or someone you don't work with? Yeah. Like, how well do you know this person? Uh, let's say, like, say, let's say it's a business, not a business thing, because I wouldn't call after hours, but like, just like a personal phone call with someone you know pretty well, like a friend of the family. Like eight. I'd say like nine. Mine's nine. Mine is nine. Gus, do you even care? You can call. Um, I mean, I normally don't call. <coughs> yeah. Uh, that would be the, the big thing. But yeah, I think anything after like eight, maybe. Really? Eight? Yeah. Okay. What I've about texting? Had, I've always had nine. Texting, I normally cut off around 10. Yeah. I text people in the middle of the night. I always apologize if I text people late. You text me a fucking video of someone dying like at 11.30 the other night. Yeah, I should have warned you about Who that, died? Right? You're like, what are the odds of this? I clicked out like, oh god, I didn't want to see that. Yeah, sorry about that. It was crazy odds though. It was a guy walking <clears throat> down the road and it's just this tire comes off a truck on the highway like a quarter of a mile away and it just bounces across this field. And the guy's just walking along, and it just like from behind, it just hits him. Not just hits him, hits him square in the back of the head. Holy like shit. it's like uh, it it could not possibly and have it killed been, him. Uh, I, uh, I I'm going to assume. Did I'm both of assume. his shoes come off? No, not like the guy in the uh, in the driveway <laughs> the ice, ice video. <laughs> that guy was great. <laughs> no, but it was you know I normally don't send that kind of thing. Like, oh, I should have sent that. I should have warned Gus about that before because yeah, that guy. I get I get woken up, up a lot because people don't know what time zone. Oh, is this it? I want to see someone oh. die. <gasps> oh my god. And he's walking next to somebody. Yeah. And it's just like... That is... Mental. Well, it's oh. one of the things, it's like... The fucking chances of that. That's, what, that's, that's where I sent to go. So what is the chance? The guy's just walking along. He's walking with somebody. The other person is totally unscathed. And he got perfectly hit by this thing. Oof. Fucking crazy. Crazy. Well, I, so what happens to the driver of that? I don't know, it's not their fault. I mean, unless, I mean, unless there's faulty like, maintenance. Yeah, yeah or something like that. Ne negligence on that side. Yeah. It's pretty big tire, so it might be I've, a commercial I've vehicle. I've seen that happen where I was driving, I remember once on 183, like over Burnett, I think. And I was in the middle lane, and in the right lane was a, a big, like an 18-wheeler. And it was a little ahead of me, and I saw a tire come off. Just like that. And it like, started rolling, bounce, bounce, and then went over the side, down to the overpass, in the intersection below. It was like, I have no idea what happened down there, but that seems like that is a fucking nightmare. Yeah. yeah. It's a bomb going off, basically. That's crazy. Can't they be tethered on somehow? 
by, by a wire? Yeah, maybe by like six bolts or something. <laughs> or like like a, I think that might be the solution. You know, here. like how some stuff has like a backup way of being connected. Like yeah, a, like you don't think one bolt's good enough, so you put another one, and then you put six <laughs> just to be safe. Like a backup for the backup for the backup for the well, backup Gus, for the backup for well, the backup. Well, the thing about six bolts will bolt into the same plate. Maybe the plate breaks. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those things. Six things is one thing. If it's all on the same thing, Gus. Six things is the same six thing. Six things, things bolt into one thing is one How thing. How do you know it's one plate? What if it's multiple plates? So you're saying each bolt and a wheel goes to a different... Well, maybe if there's like three plates. I'm being stupid now. Yeah, who's being stupid? <laughs> it's different points of failure. It's part you of became, the car. You became so British in that moment just now. Dude, I saw a, a bit uh, of an argumentative one, hasn't it? This yeah. One? Not, not my thing. I'm not into it at all. So I'm probably going to get... Something called the wrong thing here, but I believe it's an F1 pit. They had a record where they got 1.9 seconds. You, uh, Eric, I'm sure you could pull up a gift for that. It was fucking crazy. It was like changing the tires and. But I said the previous in. record was probably like 1.92 or something. I've like always that. wanted to film that in slow mo as a pit change because oh, it would fit yeah. inside the ram of the Phantom. The, uh, oh yeah, the That's red crazy. I can I never get anyone to bloody want to do it. The Red Bull Racing Team completed a pit stop. Timed at 1.923 seconds. <laughs> wow. Oh, wait, here's good. another one. 1.92. Like, that's how precise it is. It's like a three thousandths of a second when difference. It, Let me start, find some When does it <clears throat> stop? Probably when the car, I don't know. Car Probably breaks? from when they jack oh. the car, maybe. They have to lift it sometimes. Yeah, it's when they jack the car. Stuff like, like that always gets, like, stuff to it. better, too. Like, I just saw some video of a kid who's, like, six or seven and can run 100 meters in 14 seconds. Did you see that kid? No, but... Did you his name is Blaze. That's his nickname. I guess. Did you see oh. the? Like they would have known. Coincidence. Yeah. Before the Super Bowl, uh, Usain Bolt ran the the forty at like the the NFL like whatever pop up they do outside the um, the Super Bowl, mm. and he ran the forty wearing loafers, and he tied the record for fastest NFL runner ever. Yeah, but it's different. To do it. Yeah, but he's not going to be able to take a hit. Right, right, know? but yeah. he's still like, yeah. and, but wearing loafers, like not even wearing the right shoes. Yeah, <laughs> it's like whatever. Not expecting to run, yeah. showing up like, oh yeah, let me give it a try, and. That is I, someone I who is watch, named perfectly for their yeah. bolt. Yeah. I would watch an Olympic sprint in flip-flops. I think that'd be a good addition. <laughs> you have to yeah. keep them on, otherwise you you're like, disqualified. Like those thong flip-flops? Yeah. yeah. You know, in different countries like the US who like engineer the perfect flip-flop. <laughs> <to laughs> like aerodynamic flop. Super athletic boy, seven <clears throat> years old, known as Blaze. Uh, young track star by the name of Rudolf Ingram. Uh, can run the 100 meter dash in 13.4 seconds at seven years of age. That would be faster than all of us probably. What's that? Oh my god, it would blow me away probably. I'm but do you think sure about how fast I can run. I, what's the record? Like some of it's sub 10 now. Oh yeah, it's way below. I think it's like seven maybe? No, is it that low? Okay. Boy. But it's impressive because his legs are probably half <clears throat> the size of those runners. He's seven. Seven. The kid is like dusting all the other kids. It's just embarrassing, you know? I mean, not really, but if, if it was a parent, I'd be like, come on, dude. I gotta, I gotta live in the same district as a superhero. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> how, how did that happen? And my kid's gonna feel bad about you know his awesome time because this other kid is <laughs> like a time traveler or something. <laughs> can bolt. Uh, I, I, the fucking internet is so awesome. I, 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 I'm loading up shit left and right here, dude. I'm having, a, I'm having a blast I, over here. I'm playing Apex on my find tablet. Out Usain Bolt's hundred yard speed. I'm not connected to the internet. Is that Get him? that? Out. Oh, this kid. Ju 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 ju. He's wow. not that fast. Watch the fucking distance. <laughs> Look at that kid go, dude! I can do that. <laughs> Look at that wow. form. Yeah, man. Cutting through the air. And he's Damn. only gonna get better and faster. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. What's that? Get him here, Eric. I'm gonna race him. Start running now. He should be here <laughs> by the end of the show. <laughs> can we take bets on this? <laughs> yes, please. Could you oh run that God. far for in a straight, like, could you run in, in a row like that? Sure. Or do you have to take breaks? <laughs> Ever seen you run once? I'll have do, you ever run? I'll I'll when was learn, the last time you ran? I'll learn under Chris Demers. You have to have an F one team do a pit Didn't stop. Didn't you say one time you tried running, but your nipples started chafing? That wasn't me. I don't think. Oh, I could have sworn that was. Oh you no, no, that was me. Yeah, that, that did happen. I remember. <laughs> that was more distance though. That was in hundred yards. Okay. yards nothing. What is the farthest you think you've ever run in one go? I used to run distance quite a bit. Oh really? Yeah, I could do several miles. Okay, no problem. You could run several miles. I'm mm -hmm. not good at that. I'm good at. I used to be good at distance. How far could you run now before you stop? Uh. A hundred yards. <laughs> so let's see. Um, I don't think you could run a hundred yards. I must say that I don't think you could. It's harder than you think. Hundred yeah. yards is football field. That's a that's a that's a Paul. It is. Yards. I, I, I know it's a football field. I think we could all run that. <clears throat> We'd just be dead at the end. Well, sure. I mean, you can like save face and be like. <laughs> 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 Eight point eight seconds. 
8.8? Bolt, yeah. Okay. Wow. Should, we, should we all make a pact to run to the next podcast? Like full tilt from really far away? What do you mean? Why? Let's bring we'll be all and here we'll, all sweaty and we'll sit down and be like, This podcast is brought to you by... <laughs> Just do a couple laps. That's easy for you. Like me and Barb and Gus, we're sweaters. We'll just be like bleh, sitting there sweating for the rest of it. Yep. There's something sweaters? weird about you. You got like, you got a weird body. Well, I have what, whatever the opposite of hyperhidrosis is. What in my hands? They don't sweat. You're also like permanently tan for a British person. It's pretty impressive. I like this. You never sunburn either. Not yet. Went a bit red once, but it went away. You went yeah. a bit red once. I yeah. didn't peel off or anything. It's good to get those, uh, got those varied jeans. Got the, uh, UK jeans and then the uh, Southern Europe jeans. 23 of me told me I was 14% British. That's it? That's it. <clears throat> wow. Is it all in the accent? Yeah. <laughs> and the penis. I was uh, <laughs> metric system. I was 99.2% Ashkenazi Jewish. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's it. You're that so was, pure. I know. 99.2%. Wow, I don't what? think of it. See, that's like one heading as well. Like, does it break down from that, or is it just it's like, like a different regions that it could come from? So, I'm but two point four, two point four Ashkenazi Jew. Ah, my brother. Behind. I'm a. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that? That's right? one of the things they ask you when you. I'm closer. nine percent. Nine, even closer. Lachaim. It's one of the things they ask you when you. Uh, Jew bump. I think it's that one. Lachaim. They ask you when you uh, are going to have a kid. That's one of the. Ancestries they ask you about. Yeah, it. apparently they're typically less fertile. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a mm. couple different ones. Like, are you from this region or that region? Maybe that it's like blood type where you're super fertile with another Jewish person, which mm. is why the purity lives on. Interesting. I uh, have you guys <coughs> taken fertility tests? No. Like, no. Okay. I was thinking about it the other day where. I still am pretty undecided on if I want kids or not. I'm more leaning on the not side. But part of me wants to take a fertility test so I could find out if I'm even fertile. You <laughs> put pressure on yourself? No, just to like... You don't have to take birth control? But then so you like, could freeze your I'm, eggs or something. If I'm not, if I'm like 100% <clears throat> not fertile, can never have kids, I'd rather know that sooner than be in a stage of my life where I'm like, I kind of want kids. Let me see if I huh, can have that them. Makes sense. Like, just nip it in the bud. I would do it. I would do it. in the cup. Yeah, you can just start raw dogging anymore. You know, there okay. you go. Yeah. Well, don't have to worry about getting knocked up. I'm on birth control. So. <laughs> yeah, you just have to do that either. That would be awesome. Yeah, I hate pills. Hmm. Well, I have a friend, and I was gonna see if it was something. I'm pretty sure she said this publicly, but she's in her 30s and she's very focused on a, on her business right now. And so she had her eggs frozen. She went and did that. Had some eggs frozen. So yeah, it's always an option, you know. It is yeah, funny because it's I, great for busy people. I do think about like the way my life is now. <clears throat> If I were to have kids and want kids, I feel like that would come kids. in my forties. Kids are the fucking because I feel like I have People so much who have to kids do. Say that, don't do it. I know. People that have kids say have kids. Right? Yeah, that's what kids I just. That, that's great. what I literally just said. You're great. just repeating it. That's exactly what I said. But you say it like it's a detractor. It's yeah, like I have experience with People kids. People without kids will all say, "Don't do it." How about that? Because you don't know how awesome it is. You don't know how I've awesome. Heard people who you don't have know how awesome it is not to have them. I have not had kids before. <laughs> and then I had kids. Yeah, I have but you're brainwashed now. You What's have like that? It's, they're like parasites. They've altered your perception on the world. Everything's warped. Not in good ways. They're fucking parasites. That's like exactly again. That's exactly what I said. I'm saying, in spite of all that, have kids. <laughs> you're literally repeating my talking points. Yeah, but your talking points don't support your own fucking statements. You're saying people with kids, people with kids say have kids. I have perspective of not having kids and having kids. And ha you should have kids. Have a bunch of Don't kids. Don't have kids. What if have your like kid is born in the 14th time zone? <laughs> what if they have two birthdays? <laughs> then what do you do? One second later. What if you're right on that line between plus 14 and minus 10 on a boat and you give birth? What's the kid's on birthday? On February 29th. <laughs> right, it's like uh, you're straddling two different on February 29th. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh. When someone's born on February 29th, do they typically choose... If they want to have their birthday on the 28th or the 1st. Uh, probably. Do we Maybe. have anybody at Rooster Teeth who's a leap year baby? I don't think so. So what's the probability of that? <clears throat> is like 1 in 1200-ish, 1400-ish? Well, do you think people born on the 1st of March are pissed off? Because in the correct year, they could have been born on the 29th? Oh, yeah, I would imagine they missed it by a mm. smidge. Smidge. Yeah. It's all like, the timer starts from the moment you're born. Time is time. I know. It's all made up. It is, right? It's all just kind of arbitrary. You what, know, I was going to say, when we were what, talking about the time zone thing, I wanted to get away from it, but I, I, 
I've said this before. One of the things that's really impressive to me <clears throat> that we take for granted is that all my clocks are the same time. And when I was growing up, that was not the fucking case. It's like you would have your watch oh, and you'd be yeah. like, I don't know this is actually the time. Because There's a number you could call. You could call a number and it would tell you the, tell time, the time. And well, then it'd be did beep, you know like, at the beep, it'll be this time. So did you, you know that every and then the beep. second hand on every Apple Watch is in sync? That yeah, would make sense. Like yeah. down to the second, like if you film them all with a slow-mo camera, they would all move at the same time. Yeah. But it's a hard thing because we have it. But the standardization of time is something that developed in my lifetime. Yeah. It was not- Trust me, I think about yes. this almost every day. Yeah, you, you totally take it for granted. Right. Yeah. Uh, what would it have been measured in? I guess it would just would have been cycles of- I don't know. I'm trying to just, like, what did cave people uh, say about their lifespan? They, oh. they had no time for time. Seasons? They said this. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Like eventually people just drop dead and we don't know why. Seasons. You ever heard people say like he's he's 80 winters old? Yeah. Like that kind of thing? Yeah. So they just do seasons, I think. He got cold 70 yeah. times before he died. Yeah. Uh, here, I want to read this. That's what I love about the Game of Thrones world, is that uh, winter's not consistent. Well, it's uh, always coming. I want to remind everyone, this episode of Receive Podcast is also brought to you by thezebra.com. Zebra. Uh, how do you pick your car insurance? You probably just went with what your parents or friends have, uh, but you could be paying too much. Some reports say that Americans are overpaying on their car insurance by over $21 billion. But searching for a better deal can take hours and typically just ends in getting unwanted spam calls until now, thanks to thezebra.com. Thezebra.com is the nation's leading car insurance comparison site. It's the only place where you can compare hundreds of policies from all of the top carriers and choose the one that's the best for you. Plus, they'll never sell your information to spammers, so you won't get all those unwanted calls or emails. You just answer a few questions on a simple, fast form, and they find you the best rates and coverages in your state. TechCrunch is called the Zebra Kayak for Auto Insurance. It's quick, it's easy, it's free. Just an honest way to compare car insurance quotes from all of the top providers all at once. Just go today to start saving at thezebra.com slash rooster. That's thezebra.com slash rooster. Spelled out T-H-E-Z-E-B-R-A dot com slash rooster. Thezebra.com slash rooster. I checked it out. Super fast. You can see every top insurance carrier all in one place. Uh, and like they said, they don't sell your information. They they get money if you sign up with uh, with someone else. So go check it out. Uh, I got to use that because... Great service. While JD was had a learner's <clears throat> permit and I had to be in the car with him, he was basically just like an additional driver on my policy. Mm -hmm. No big deal. The moment he turned 16 and has his own license and can drive by himself, that was not the fucking case. Yep. And I was just like, oh, we'll just add him to like my policy as, a, as an independent driver now. And then they sent me the estimate on it across all of my cars. I'm like, fuck that. No way. He's going to go down to just his truck that he's got. Mm -hmm. And that's it. It's like he's not going to be – because on Ashley's car and my car – a 16 year old driving that around is what the how they rate it. And they're like, mm. oh, yeah. So you're going to pay thousands of dollars. I'm like, fuck that. No way. I, I know a website for you. All right. That's, so <laughs> I, I need to use it. Um, so you were talking about age being bullshit. Um, yeah. There, there, there's an interesting thing. I don't know if you know this. In Korea, <clears throat> when everyone is born, they're one year old. Oh, and dude. Everyone's age goes up by one on New Year's Day. No. So you're born at one, and then on New Year's Day, you get one year added to your Wait a second. Everyone born has the same birthday? You get one year older on New Year's Day. You don't so have the same birthday. Someone born but you age at the at end the of time. December. It's a birthday. Yeah. Someone born at the end of December so could be two a week later. Right. That's mental. <laughs> but then you have that situation like with twins where they always know which one was born first, you know? Or if one's born right before New Year's and one's born right after New Year's, one's one and one's two. That yeah. makes any damn sense. It's weird. There's always something in every culture though that doesn't make any fucking sense. That's just know? to speak to your point where age is <laughs> that one's particularly it's, it's weird. Just weird and bullshit. Time is usually the one thing. Time and math is like you don't fuck with, you know, like numbers specifically, not mathematics. Mathematics is basically universal law, but the way we represent numbers, that's pretty standard, you know? Which is in the physical symbols? Yeah. Like the way I write the number two. If I write there's tons of ways to write two. Is there? Like Roman numerals would be different. Well, everyone understands that. But just if you actually write, but Roman numerals are two. used for, like, in movie used, sequels. That's and about used it. On a clock, or in, in year. For some reason, they put it in years, right? Like oh, Super yeah. Bowl copyright L. Yeah, yeah. And that what really changed L? when we got to two thousand. Just became MM. Yeah, so much easier. <laughs> it was so much longer before. Yeah, but like if we go to China and write two zero and show it to somebody, they know it's twenty. They know it's two zero, right? It's universal. I can't do that with anything else, Gav. I can't even I show mean, them letter A and they less, go. Oh, A. Not less developed and countries your head might is. not use numbers. What okay. country doesn't use numbers? What number country doesn't use numbers, Gav? Well, like a tribe probably doesn't use the symbol. But that's not numbers. a country, is it? 
Yes, Gavin. Gavin. Oh, <laughs> you know who else doesn't use numbers? People that are too young to know what numbers are. Fucker. I mean, we, of course you can come up with something. I'm just saying how amazing, how standardized that is versus everything else. Parrots don't know numbers. You're right. So ours is the only species that uses parrot numbers. numbers. Parrots. Oh, oh, parrots. Parrots. <laughs> They don't. Parents. Or zebras. They don't use fucking numbers the way that we do. Some horses do, right? They like, they like stomp. Yeah. But I can't steal a horse in number two. You can ask them to do math. And it'll stomp twice. Here's, you're struggling to come up with a way to disprove what I said. It's just an observation. I'm just. I mean, it's pretty impressive can't that numbers are ever guarantee. There might be a country somewhere that doesn't do it. You keep saying that. Canada. I don't know all okay. the countries. I couldn't what even name 200. Hey, can you name a country that uses a different alphabet? Use Any? numbers. Yeah. Probably about 40, yeah. right off the top of your head, can't yeah. you? Yeah, because there's a lot. But you can't name one, but you think it might exist, one that uses different numbers. That's my point. It's more standardized. It's pretty impressive that we standardize numbers. I think it's great. Okay, great. <laughs> also, copy, <laughs> the copyright symbol. <laughs> it's what? You just see it on like a bunch of Japanese characters. Copyright. Is that true? I don't know. There's like certain characters that just <laughs> stick out you know, on a menu or something. Is that true? Huh? Everyone uses Arabic numerals. I one thing I love everyone is, ever? I think there's some it seems like there's some languages that also have other systems, mm -hmm. but they still use Arabic numerals as well. I think it's impressive that we've dragged in like Greek symbols so long. That the Greek alphabet is used oh yeah. A lot. Yeah. It's using a lot of science stuff. There's a lot of like ohms and things like that. Yeah. You know. A lot of frats. Like, what's that? A lot of frats use it. Why yeah. do they use why do, why do frats use Greek letters. I used to know the answer to that, and it's escaping my memory why they're called Greek organizations. I looked it up one time, and uh, I don't know. I don't know. That, that's so strange to me. Speaking of Greek, Go playing on. been playing God of War. Not that it's Greek anymore. But Do you know the Greek alphabet? Uh, no. Could you say it? No. I mean, I could say it. Alpha, beta, something, gamma. delta. Yeah, alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Delta. Lambda. Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Xi, Omicron, Pyro, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, Chi, Psi, Omega. Omicron's a great one. Yeah. Sounds really out of place. Omicron. Sounds like a Decepticon. Yeah. And Xi. Xi. What's the, Just three uh, lines. What's the alphabet called where it's like uh, Alpha, Bravo? Oh, it's <laughs> oh, like, like a, the radio calls? Like yeah. I think there's two different versions of that. Controls? One of them is uh, NATO, and the other one is... I forgot what the other one was. Yeah. There it is. Oh, Greek. Omicron is just O. Oh, it's so boring, though, you know? Yeah. It's oh, like, it's for Omicron. But you can see where our alphabet kind of came out of that. You know, I've always been fascinated by a, W. B, G, D. But everyone's taught to draw it like double Vs. But it's W. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's, it's funny that I think in out German, of all letters, we have U and W. I think in German, it's called double V. It's, in French, it's called double V. Yeah. Double V. Yeah. It's, it's called double V in other places. Yeah. It's also the only letter... That you don't use the letter in the sound of the letter. W. W. There's no, there's no W in it. That's the know. only one? I mean, I don't, I don't use it in H. H? You don't use it H? H? I mean, some people say H. 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 That's a different sound to... But you use the letter H in it. There's the no H. W in it anywhere. The sound for H is used in there. But you, Gavin, there's probably a tribe in the world that does use it. Are we talking about, like, for the phonetical sound? <laughs> sound when it, it's, it's, it's different to... So you use the letter, I think is what he said. He didn't use That's the, what I said. Yeah. Right. Let's take it back. <laughs> like E. Use E. Eh. <laughs> uh, you, know what's, you, know, you know what I was just thinking about? We, C. Did, did we talk about this on the podcast or did I just say it to you in conversation? You don't use C. What's what? C? Am I <laughs> Sensor? <laughs> Keep working on it. <laughs> Keep working on it over there. Uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> but it, one of the things you often learn, you learn letters in other languages, you learn numbers in other languages, and then you also learn <laughs> expletives and insults. That's one of the things that you learn. Uh -huh. It's funny how many words in J Japanese that I know, and I know how no insults. I think we talked about this Did on we the talk, podcast. We, I talked about it to you personally. I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast. But I, I just made that realization the other day. I know no way to insult someone in Japanese, which seems very Japanese to me. Hmm. Like it's a very polite culture. Baka. Baka? <laughs> what does that mean? Stupid? Yeah. People uh, always it's like used the, to, the only one anybody knows. People used to uh, uh, draw that on pictures of Joe the cat, like in his sombrero. Baca? They made they would baka coming out of his mouth or something because he was grumpy. I guess they thought. <laughs> so, and I had to look up what baka meant. How do you say Idiot. vagina? I don't know. Baca. Idiot. <laughs> 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 All right, let's wrap this up. Okay. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Hey, happy President's Day. 
Uh, there's still, I think, like, there might not be by the time this airs, but there's a couple of tickets left for our live show. Oh. Which is taking place March 25th? Yes. March 25th. March 25th for the podcast. I think 26th for Always Open. Yep. And then 27th for Off Topic, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, if you want to do that, you can go to either the, uh, there you go, universe.com slash live ATX19. Hell yeah. There you go. And you can come see us live. It'll be so much more impressive. Or I guarantee. Not. Or not. <laughs> Just as impressive, maybe. <laughs> All right, buy a ticket anyway. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Kids. Calm, you're pointing at a camera. That's if a camera. you enjoyed this video, then hi. like, comment, and subscribe. And subscribe. And watch the other videos. Hit, and if you didn't like the, the video, bell. maybe just go away. Hit don't the bell. don't the bell. do the other thing with the, the thumbs down. Ring that bell. Dislike nobody, this nobody video. Now they're going to dislike it. Ding, 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 Probably. dong. Probably. Ding, dong.